Hello there, I'm Lloyd Evans. Welcome to my channel. In this video, we absolutely must talk about the very latest Caleb and Sophia monstrosity. Now, if you were among the 100,000 who watched my traumatized by a cupcake video, thumbnail here, you will know that apart from it being just a horrifying example of child indoctrination and demonizing perfectly innocuous behavior by children. In this case, Caleb getting a little bit of cupcake on his nose <laughs> during a birthday celebration, which Jehovah's Witnesses aren't allowed to celebrate, and denying having called at his schoolmates' homes in the preaching activity. If you were among those that watched my rebuttal, or indeed watched the cartoon itself with or without my rebuttal, you will know that the cartoon in question, which has the title Jehovah Forgives, ends with Caleb kind of jokingly saying, oh yeah, what are the reasons why Jehovah's Witnesses don't celebrate birthdays? He's gone through this whole ordeal <laughs> of feeling so guilty and so traumatized at what happened that he was sobbing into his kitchen table and he didn't actually know what the reasons were. Just absolutely astonishing. Well, in the latest installment, in the very next lesson, in fact, because they're called lessons, lesson 41 we're apparently going to find out what the reason is. Caleb is going to have it explained to him. Now, right off the bat, let's look at the artwork for introducing this video. Should we celebrate birthdays? Question mark is the title. Underneath, they quote their Deuteronomy 18 verse 14. Most witnesses probably won't bother to look this verse up. I think we should. I think we should look it up because it immediately will show us how preposterous this whole thing is. Deuteronomy 18 verse 14, for these nations that you are dispossessing used to listen to those practicing magic and divination, but Jehovah your God has not allowed you to do anything like this. So right off the bat, before we've even seen a single frame of the animation, Jehovah's Witnesses are being told that celebrating your birthday is akin to practicing magic and divination. I'll let you decide, viewers, <laughs> whether that accurately describes what celebrating birthdays is all about and whether that is what's in the mind of someone who is celebrating their birthday. In any case, let's get on with this and roll the first clip. So Dad, why don't we celebrate our birthday? Good question. How would you answer that at school? Notice how Caleb has asked the question, so why is it that we don't celebrate birthdays? A question he's now asking for the second time, by the way, because let's remember how the previous cartoon ended. Oh, wait. I'm going to need to explain birthdays. Can you help me? Of course. So twice now, twice, Caleb has asked the question, what's all this about, Dad? <laughs> Now that you've seen how traumatized I am by this whole experience, now that you've seen me crying into our kitchen table because I'm so messed up over this innocuous cupcake incident at school, why is it, by the way, <laughs> just out of interest, that we don't celebrate birthdays? He's asking the question twice, it seems, and Caleb's dad, his response is to say, oh, well, you tell me. What would you say, Caleb, to your friends at school on this issue? Caleb doesn't know, you idiot. That's why he's asking the question. 
oh, it was, I, I was so infuriated right in those first few seconds of the cartoon because that's the sort of sneering, know-it-all answer that Jehovah's Witnesses are trained to give in the ministry when they're conducting a Bible study. And the makers of this video are just assuming that's how it works with kids. A kid asks you a question and you make the kid answer their own question even though they don't have a clue, which is why they're asking the question to begin with. So right off the bat, <laughs> this cartoon is infuriating, but we must press on. How would you answer that at school? Uh, because Jehovah doesn't like it? Yes, but why? Do you like presents and treats? Yes! But do you want them like this? Birthday celebrations mix good things with things Jehovah doesn't like. How manipulative. Bear in mind, this is aimed at children and children are expected to equivocate birthday presents with a swamp, with a fly-ridden swamp. Effectively, that's, if you think about it, that's what Watchtower is doing to the birthday presents, to many years worth of birthday presents of millions of Jehovah's Witness children, just literally taking them and throwing them in the swamp. That's what I took from this. I know that's not the message. The message is, oh, Jehovah doesn't like mixing good things with bad things, just as you wouldn't mix good things, birthday presents with bad things, a swamp. That's the message. But the imagery and the way it's used and the context in which it's used, for me, the take-home message is, oh, you like birthday presents, do you? Boom, dunk. Try fishing them out of that swamp. We're ruining all of your birthdays for years and years throughout all the time that you're in our cult. Just deal with it, kids. Birthday celebrations mix good things with things Jehovah doesn't like. How? Long ago, many people believed in good and evil spirits and were afraid of them. They thought presents and treats on their birthday could protect them. And like today, they made wishes that only good things would happen to them. What does the Bible say about birthdays? It talks about them but not good ones. There was Pharaoh in Egypt and Herod in Jesus' day. They were proud rulers and had people put to death at their birthday parties. Can you remember if Jesus celebrated his birthday? Uh, no. That's right, he didn't. He told us to celebrate the date of his death because it gives us the hope of living forever. And Jesus taught us to give good things to each other any time we want, like, like today. <laughs> Good timing. Hi, yes. Ah, yes, mum's on hand to present a nice pie that she's been baking because we all know that's what mums should be doing. <laughs> mums should just be chained to the kitchen sink, ready to produce goodies on demand. <laughs> to help give a visual aid when daddy is indoctrinating the boy. So yes, wow, where do we even begin? Let's just go back to front, shall we? Um, it doesn't work, Watchtower, to say, oh, well, you don't have to have nice things on your birthday. You can have them at any time. That's not the point. It's not just about receiving nice things. It's about the fact that People have value, children have value, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with celebrating someone's life on the date of their birth. Nothing at all. Nothing wrong with it. It doesn't work to simply say, oh yes, well, never mind about all that. 
you can have nice things on a different day or at any time of the year. Yeah, I grew up with that sort of logic and it tidied me over for a while, but no, no just no. <laughs> then we get this stupid, what are examples of birthdays in the Bible logic, which I've already dealt with in the previous video on this series, Traumatized by a Cupcake. Look, as I've said many times, it just doesn't work to say, oh, the Bible speaks about this in a negative light, therefore Jehovah hates it. That is not logical reasoning. It's perfectly conceivable that just by coincidence, something is mentioned in a negative light in the Bible repeatedly, like, for example, dogs is the example I gave. That doesn't mean dogs are bad. It doesn't mean that that thing is intrinsically bad or something that God hates. It's manifestly flawed reasoning, just as it's flawed reasoning to say, is there an example of Jesus celebrating his birthday? Ah, no, there isn't. Therefore, Jesus hates birthdays. <laughs> no, no, again, not how it works, I'm afraid. In order to make the argument, God hates birthdays, you would need a verse in the Bible that says, I, God, hate birthdays. And as I've already argued, God had no problem at all putting precisely that sort of straightforward language in the Bible if there was something that he hated. But you won't find anywhere, anywhere in the Bible, a verse of that type. What Watchtower is doing by coming up with this convoluted half-baked reasoning is essentially putting words in God's mouth and doing the same thing that it complains about when it comes to the Jewish leaders in Jesus' day. We were always learning as Jehovah's Witnesses, oh, the Jewish leaders took things too far. Instead of just being concerned about the law, they created a hedge around the law. They created lots of other laws to stop people breaking the laws that really mattered. And before you knew it, the Jewish people were saddled with all sorts of laws that actually had nothing to do at all with what God's law actually was. Well, that's exactly, that's exactly what we're seeing depicted here. And again, going back to front, what's the first reason that Caleb is given? Oh, pagan links, links to pagan times. Long ago, people believed in spirits. I think you'll find, Dad, <laughs> that people still believe in spirits today, not just in ancient times. Belief in the supernatural is pretty widespread <laughs> in lots of manifestations anyway. People once believed in spirits and one of the ways that they showed their belief in spirits is by celebrating birthdays. We wouldn't want to be like those people. We wouldn't want to be like the pagans. So that's why we don't celebrate birthdays. If we celebrate our birthday, we're essentially practicing pagan worship. Again, not a good argument. In fact, a terrible argument for two main reasons. First of all, it's not logical. Second of all, it's not consistent. It's not logical because you can have an innocuous thing that people do and some people doing it for a bad reason and others doing it for a good reason doesn't make the innocuous thing itself intrinsically bad. Example, I like flying drones. I like flying drones to take aerial images of landscape, etc. Other people like flying drones to kill people. <laughs> Other people use drones to bomb buildings and militants and also civilians. That doesn't mean it's bad to fly drones. Again, innocuous thing, different ways of doing that thing or using that thing doesn't make the thing itself bad. That's the type of shoddy reasoning that they're pushing on people here. Oh, people celebrated birthdays, this innocuous thing, for a bad reason, therefore we can't do it. Not how it works. 
and it's inconsistent because the organization doesn't apply this sort of logic to other things. For example, the wedding ring. Here's mine. <laughs> so here's an interesting questions from readers for you, viewers, especially those of you who happen to be Jehovah's Witnesses. If you uh, happen to have access to Watchtower Online Library, look up the 1972 Watchtower, January 15th, page 63, questions from readers. Is it proper for a Christian to wear a wedding ring? So says someone in Greece. I won't read the whole thing, but here are some highlights. Many sincere Christians have asked this question out of a desire to avoid any custom of which God might disapprove. Some of the questioners know that Catholic prelate John H. Newman wrote, the use of temples and these dedicated to particular saints, sacerdotal vestments, the tonsure, the ring in marriage, turning to the east, images at a later date, perhaps the ecclesiastical chant, and the Kairi Elison, I'm sorry, I don't know how that's pronounced, are all of pagan origin and sanctified by, by their adoption into the church. While the facts prove that many of the current religious practices Newman lists definitely were adopted from pagan worship, is that true of the wedding ring? The wedding ring is supposed to be of Roman origin and to have sprung from the ancient custom of using rings in making agreements. That's the American Cyclopedia. Various explanations have been given of the connection of the ring with marriage. It would appear that wedding rings were worn by the Jews prior to Christian times. That's the International Cyclopedia. It is thus seen that the precise origin of the wedding ring is uncertain. Even if it were a fact that pagans first used wedding rings, would that rule out such for Christians? Not necessarily. Many of today's articles of clothing and aspects of life originated in pagan lands. The present time divisions of hours, minutes and seconds are based on an early Babylonian system. Yet, there is no objection to a Christian's using these time divisions, for one's doing so does not involve carrying on false religious practices. Isn't that interesting? And I could read on, but I will instead invite you to read that article if you are one of Jehovah's Witnesses. But let's just take what we've read there. What they're saying is actually lots of things that are part of everyday life, like using the divisions of hours, minutes and seconds, have sort of pagan origins. But it's not so much about that. It's more about whether they involve false religious practices. By that logic alone, What's wrong with birthdays? It's part of life, part of everyday life for billions of people. Doesn't involve any false religious practice. It's literally just an observance of the date of someone's birth. So what's the big deal? What is the big deal? In fact, I will scroll on in the article. Really, the question is not so much whether wedding rings were first used by pagans, but whether they were originally used as part of false religious practices and still retain such religious significance. That's really the question. Were they really used as part of false religious practices and do they still retain such religious significance. You decide, viewers. You decide. Even if it can be argued that a birthday is a false religious practice or part of a false religious practice, does it still retain such religious significance? 
when a kid is invited round to their friend's birthday party, do they think, oh, I'm going to celebrate a religious practice? Not remotely. But this is the sort of logic they're using to say, nothing wrong with a wedding ring. Wedding ring's fine. Birthday's bad. <laughs> exactly the same situation of something that could be argued as having a pagan origin, but for arbitrary reasons, in the case of birthdays, the organization says, no, this is actually something that Jehovah hates to the extent where Caleb should be sobbing into his kitchen table for having dared to involve himself in something that makes his God sad. Disgraceful propaganda, again, aimed at children, aimed at spoiling the childhoods of children. And I can fully understand why many call this a form of abuse. Really, it is. This stuff stays with you, as I can fully attest, as someone raised in a Jehovah's Witness family and who was deprived all of this innocence. Again, it's all totally innocuous doesn't do anyone any harm at all. And they come up with reasons to make something that's fun and innocent seem sinister and evil. And to add insult to injury, they show the birthday presents going in the swamp. Ugh. <laughs> Just outrageous. But that's, I guess, all I have to say on this particular cartoon. Let me know what you think in the comments below viewers. What do you make of all this? But that's all I have for you. Don't forget to subscribe to the Lloyd Evans channel for more such videos. And as always, thank you for watching.